I don't even want to go to the dance on Saturday night. Oh, but you gotta go. It'll be all right. Just stay with Hollis and me. Besides, you gotta see the dress I got. Cut down to here, slid up to there. I may not get out alive. Hey guys, welcome back to Spooky Tuesday, a weekly podcast where we're breaking down all of our favorite slashers, thrillers, monster movies, and black comedies on the new scariest day of the week. I'm Sydney Thompson. I'm Monica Height. And I'm Chelsea Duff. And this week, we are talking about, honestly, maybe one of my favorite movies ever, ever. Ooh. I, yes. I love, I've lo- I love this movie originally, but like the more that I rewatch it, the more that I love it. And that is the Canadian, Canadian. slasher from 1981, They're not all nice. My Bloody Valentine. Stunning, stunning, gorgeous. Last year, Starting I made out us with a do... round of applause. Oh, important. Um, last <laughs> year, I made us do Valentine 2001, and perhaps we should have waited for this year because it just had its 21st birthday, and everybody was suddenly, all of a sudden, pumped for it and posting about it on social media. And I was like, where is this love last year when I wanted to talk about Valentine? Um, oh, fakes. Right, fake right. But last year, yeah, I and last year was the, the 20th anniversary. So 20 is still important. Um, exactly. And then I, with our spooky crew though, we watched My Bloody Valentine and I'd never seen it before. Monica, I think you hadn't seen it either, right? No, the first time I saw it was with you guys last year. Yeah. And it was like such a blast. We had so much fun. Um, and we were like, okay, we have to do this next year on the pod. Like we left it in a full ass year ago. So I was so excited for it to come back around. It's because I suggested, I was like, we should do this movie. And Chelsea was like, no, we're doing Valentine. And I was no, like, no, I absolutely know okay. my first set. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, okay, we can, uh, but so I was like, fine, but we're going to watch it with Spooky Crew and we're going to do it next year. And that was our compromise. And true to her word, Miss mm-hmm. Duff allowed it. I'm so I mean, benevolent, generous <laughs> even maybe. So benevolent. I would have mm-hmm. gone down on the mat for this movie as well, because it is so fucking fun it's it's so silly it's so Mm -hmm. canadian at times um the way they say sorry every single time or just oh very degrassi that very degrassi uh (laughs) and i just like love the whole cast like what a great group of friends (laughs) they're all having such a good time i was so happy for them i was like great they're just in their 20s they're living their lives they're also in the mine a lot which, you know, that kind of sucks, but you know, they're doing a lot and everyone has a cute girlfriend and the girlfriends are all awesome. I loved it. (laughs) Okay. So if you haven't seen this movie, my bloody Valentine is about is no, it's about, I got that right. I was like, am I saying that wrong? I was right. It's a boot. How do we, how do Canadians? It's a boot. boot. Yeah. I'm scared all of a sudden. I think they say a boot. I think they do. Okay. <laughs> um, a me. decades old folk tale surrounding a deranged murderer killing those who celebrated Valentine's Day turns out to be true to legend when a group defies the killer's orders and people start turning up dead. Oh, this, but here's the thing, mm-hmm. especially for the time. Because, like, this is very early on in, like, the slasher genre, right? It's 81. Mm-hmm. So you have Halloween. You have Friday the 13th. But most of those are centered around, like, teenagers that are, like, suburbanites, right? Like, know what I mean? Yeah. Like, all of those kids that worked at a camp came from, like, white wealthy families. You know they did. Like, it's just – and, like, this you have – 20 year olds it's very blue collar it's very like the they're setting. literally covered in coal dust yeah but oh like, yeah the setting itself think about it like a small town is very isolating <gasps> and then to like be in a mine one the mm-hmm. town is called valentine bluff which i think is incredible it's gorgeous like, the <laughs> mines are claustrophobic and scary and it just creates this like incredible backdrop for like a really fun a really original and quite frankly a really brutal horror movie it is so brutal start to finish it is 
Trey nasty. And <laughs> like, I mean, the first thing that I noticed that I thought maybe was too much, I was like, okay, the tragedy occurs on Valentine's Day. And then it's also called Valentine's Bluff. Like, I feel like we didn't need both. Um, but, <laughs> but then I thought about it more and I was like, the reason that the tragedy is so much worse is because everyone is so hyphy for Valentine's Day. And they're right. that hyphy for Valentine's Day because it's called Valentine's Bluff. Bluff. And so yeah, I was like, okay, why... it all makes sense to me now. And I'll let mm -hmm. them have it. The original party is such a big deal that the two overseers are like, we're just going to leave these miners down in the mine and go to the party because that's like their town's whole thing. They're just so excited. It's once a year, you guys. It's Valentine's Day. Can't wait one hour so people Can't won't blow one up. One that's God. one hour of the Valentine's dance. We won't get back, Monica. Well, then they didn't that's get back the rest of their lives like, because Henry or whatever. Harry? Harry. Harry, Harry comes and fucking wrecks their shit. Well, so... <laughs> It was like a bunch of miners get trapped and it took them what, like a week to get no. several weeks, I think. Like, was it's, it? I think they said maybe Did I write six, it down? but maybe that's Ooh. too long. But I remember the number no, six. No, it was six. Yeah. It's six weeks. Yeah. Wow. So he, he had time to eat every single one of his brethren. Which <laughs> <laughs> was so fucked up. Because there was like an explosion. There were six men that were trapped in the mine only one of them survived he ate five people first of all that's I feel like one person would go for longer it's, I would assume there's a lot well, of meat once on a you one open body, up a person once you open up rotten, a person they'll spoil yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you so. gotta kill the next one <laughs> but here's the thing you know like all of five were eating one and then four were eating one and three were true, eating one true. and then harry was just the last one left it wasn't yeah, harry, harry had to keep the rest eating. of them fresh he couldn't kill them all in oh. one bow. i had right, a very like... beautiful image of harry having an all-you-can-eat buffet of five dudes <laughs> <laughs> you just said they're not gonna keep for six weeks monica you've gotta be strategic. i know but he was well, like you maybe know what it's this cool week there. it feels like a tyler week like Let's have a Tyler theme. And next week, it'll be George's week. You know what I mean? So they're just, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just going for it. But like that scene where they show like them finding Harry and he's like got like these got huge blue eyes, blood all over his face. And he's like nah, 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 on an arm. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. So fun. Well, honestly, and like it's alarming because the music that plays is like startling. But just like it's so funny. It do be like, silly. <laughs> way, and he screams in that moment. Yes. It's not just yes. that they show him. He does like a full scream. <laughs> Gosh. Oh my God. But, and then like, okay, let it, let us not forget the opening scene the opening of this scene. movie. Oh my God. Because, okay, in true to life Monica form, I forgot what happens in this movie. Um, and I forgot the like twist or whatever at the end. So I was like, why is this hot bitch fucking Harry <laughs> at the <laughs> beginning? <laughs> I'm like, he's like older and, and wasn't hot when this happened, when he was eating arms, you know? So like, how mm -hmm. the fuck did he pull this beautiful woman? Um, but I, you know, I love a theme. You know, we're all dressed in in a holiday attire right now, except for Sydney, but that's fine. Um, she I got herself red on my shirt. Thank you very much. Okay, it says stay, stay dangerous, dangerous, which that's I really like. Romantic, <laughs> true to form, Sydney, <laughs> right there. <laughs> Here's the thing: on Valentine's Day, which you know, this is us. So pre Valentine's Day, we uh -huh. like celebrate the Saint Valentine's Day massacre, aka Stay Dangerous. <laughs> Wow, beautiful, dark. She justified alluring. it. That's a good explanation. <laughs> <laughs> but like, okay, they love a theme. We love a theme. And I love that this beautiful hot lady who like gets to wear the whole minor suit. I like that. She's there being safe. She had the gas mask so on and everything. Boring. And then she takes it off, which is even better. And she has like the worst tattoo I've ever seen of that little cartoon heart over her heart. And <laughs> I just love the idea that like he sees that and he's like, he's all horned up. He's about to go at it, but he sees her cartoon heart tattoo and he's like, Valentine's Day. And then he fucking kills her. <laughs> Wait, that's a really interesting point though, actually. Do you think 
he really was triggered or do you think that it was always a he was luring her down there in the first place like well, do you think him trying to fuck her in the mine is what set this off or did can he we, was doing what chelsea was doing is did he yeah. lure her down can we have this conversation she, now actually even though it reveals who the killer is can we just we spoiler, can spoiler spoiler yeah 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 i mean like spoiler alert this movie came out when eight 1890 is what I almost It's 31 said. years ago, which is why I should have uh, listened to Sydney. We should have swapped it and done this one last year for its 30 year anniversary. 41 and this year years for its ago? 21 year anniversary. Nobody made that pitch to me at the time, to be Chelsea, clear. 41. 41. I Babe, that, we're about to be 30. Like, <laughs> I'm 31 and uh, 1989 was 10, 11, nine, nine years before me. Nine years before me. I was in the nine, I'm a 90s baby. Our 20s are ending soon, but we're not going to get into that now. 41 years ago, this beautiful film was released. <laughs> we're moving on. <laughs> You've had 41 years to watch it, so we can tell you who the real killer is. But, I mean, we don't even have to discuss that to discuss this. Like, the reason that I thought that the heart incensed him is because he was like, ooh, boobies. Like, that was what his body language was and then he like looks at the heart and his hands are like he starts shaking uncontrollably and then he grabs her and throws her into the to the what is that called a pick pickaxe a minor pickaxe ah yes a pickaxe yeah that's so interesting though because um again spoiler 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 but the killer we learn at the end um is is axel um, and so to me, I was like, okay, I wonder if he was triggered by the fact that this is the first time they've had the Valentine's Day dance in 20 years. And that's what brought this all back to the forefront and sent him on a killing spree. Or is it um, he's dating this girl, Sarah, and her ex-boyfriend TJ just came back into the picture because he just came back to town. And so I was yeah. like, is it that things are not going well with Sarah anymore and that like in combination did it i think it's the um, combo pack yeah here's the but, thing or was it is he cheating on his girlfriend Sarah? right because <laughs> uh, he was if he lured her down there then obviously things had been set in motion earlier um but also we see him with sarah and he does kind of suck like serial killing aside or spree killing i guess maybe this is technically um if you're really getting into the what kind of killings these are um but he is a shitty boyfriend so like he very much could just be cheating on her in the beginning and then in that moment he sees the valentine's day heart and and it sends him on his spiral hmm Hmm. I wonder which version I like best. I don't really care which makes the most sense, but I'm not sure yet. I feel like, I feel like it's gotta be more than just the heart, but like, I, like, I feel like he was on the edge and maybe he was like cheating to get back at Sarah because he felt like maybe she was doing the same thing with TJ already. Uh. But I mean, like. I have no fucking idea and there's no way to know. <laughs> he was gonna kill people. He was gonna cheat. He didn't plan to do a two in one in that moment, but things happen. Um, Shit happens. It's the mines, you know. Yeah. Things get she wild was really, in the she mines. She was like broking the hose of his gas mask though. I just want what? that to not go unsaid. Well, that thank was some you for real saying that because I didn't notice that. Sexual visual metaphor. You know what? It had to be done. There, if there's a hose, it must be stroked in one of these, uh, in one of these type of eighty slashers. Um, and I, and you know, it's wonderful. It's not nipples in the first sec second, like face yeah. killing, but um, it is boobies in the first four minutes, and so we appreciate that. Important. <laughs> it doesn't go unnoticed. Like boobies in the first four minutes. Big yeah. fan of that. Big fan. Big fan. Everybody take note. Uh, yeah, I mean. Um, but it was, it was a really gorgeous opening sequence because then when he smashes her head back into the pig's axe, like the camera just zooms in on her mouth. You just get a really close shot of her mouth screaming. So gorgeous, you know, important. It's very important. And like, okay, right away, I just love the, the vibes in this movie. And it makes me so sad that half the people get got, but like everybody so is many. having such a good time, you know? And everybody's so fun and they have their little bar crew. And there's I, Hollis, who has the mustache, who I'm in love with. 
Oh my god, I'm also in love with Hollis. Hollis is so awesome. He's 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 so cute. He is so cute, and his girlfriend Patty, Patty. I love her so much, and I have been calling her Marnie, and that's because she looks identical to Molly Marnie from Halloween Town. She looks the exact same as Marnie from Halloween Town. The exact same. Look it up right now. Take the time. Go on. No, I know, but look up Marnie. They look the exact same. <laughs> like Marnie today or like sh- no Marnie in Halloween town. They look like they could be sw- sisters. They literally I see look- the resemblance in my head, but I would never have made that connection on my own. I sorry, I just have a big beautiful brain that's always <laughs> thinking about Halloween town. <laughs> But I was like, is that Marnie's mom? Like, what's happening? I don't think so, but I don't have, I was going to look it up before this movie. It's just a check. But I didn't didn't do it. Well, her name is Cynthia Dale, and I'm not seeing anything on her Mm -hmm. IMD, although she was in Moonstruck. Fascinating. I didn't know that. Um, But she, it says she has one child and it doesn't say that the child is Marnie from Halloween Town. So it's William Mansbridge. Damn. Too bad. Anyway, maybe they're cousins or something. (laughs) It's her great aunt. Who knows? (laughs) Anyway, we love Marnie, um, AKA Patty, Patty. I guess. I'll do my best to call her Patty, but if I say Marnie, you know who I'm talking about. That's my girlfriend. Please show a little respect. Um, I respect her so much. She's so hot. She's wonderful. She's hilarious. That her and Hollis, is that his name? Yeah, um, they're the are, most wonderful couple in the world, possibly. They are so cute and like they just are in love and I hate everything that happens to them. Yeah, I really I did forget the ending of this movie because we watched it a year ago and like halfway through I started to be like, wait, I think Axel might be the killer. Um and I started to pay more attention to him. I wish I had remembered from the beginning. Um but I forgot that both of them get got. And then I was so sad when it kept happening. Here's okay. The this is a movie where like when we, if we talk about like our favorite kills, I want to talk about our, my least favorite kills because there are mm-hmm. just like so many people that I did not want to die in this movie. Like same. Mabel, Mabel did not. Mabel, Mabel wasn't oh. innocent. <laughs> I want to grow up to be Mabel, not necessarily to own a laundromat, but like to be the woman who plans the Valentine's Day dance and does Mm -hmm. such a stunning job with the decor. Directs all the little girlies to do the decor and the plans. And like flirts with the mayor a little bit, like a little like sends some candies to the police chief. Like she's making her rounds. Be my Valentine. And he was down. He was so down. Oh, so and tragic. Like, she's the second one to die in the movie. Um, so, but what happens was, was like uh, the first, the unnamed uh, titty tattoo She truly girl, does not even have a name. That's tragic. <laughs> unnamed titty tattoo girl um, gets her heart put in a Valentine's Day candy box that is deli- like given to the mayor and the sheriff. And then, like, we see them, like, rushing to figure out. They're like, oh, my God, Harry Warden is back. And then it cuts. Yes. Okay. Here's the thing. We kind of briefly touched on it before. It wasn't just the mine explosion. And then Harry had to cannibalize everybody. Um, Although that did happen. It's that also they sent him to um, a mental health facility because he had been through a lot. Um, But then one year later, he broke out. He did murders again. He murdered the two people, the two overseers. And he did this whole thing where he put their hearts in the candy boxes and wrote little Valentine's Day poems, which is like so cute and sweet. We love a theme. We like love commitment to the bit, you know? Um, But left them at the Valentine's Day dance. Stunning, bloody, gorgeous the visual iconic um he really went there and he really committed and I really respect that um in his his design his planning you know what I mean if you're gonna do murders what's the thing where it's like the uh, see what would his be where he put stop (laughs) he put his whole valentussy in it (laughs) help sweet god (laughs) please go (laughs) he did 
like what are we supposed to say he did <laughs> he did though he did sydney's writing this down and she wants to do it for the title <laughs> I already knew it. His whole Valentussy. That should be the title. <laughs> Capitalized it in my computer. <laughs> Here, I'm, I'll, I'll write it down too, just in case. There we go. Thank God. Um, the reason that I have been quiet is because the last five minutes I've been trying to find out the name of Sylvia's boyfriend and I can't fucking figure it out and I'm going to go nuts. Wait, John. Is it yeah. John? It's John. Yeah. Okay, it took me so long after- to get everybody's names. I got everybody's names like after they died, basically. And then they would go, John's dead. And I was like, oh, that was John. John dogs. didn't die. Oh, sc- excuse me. Sorry, John. No, don't is say Peter that. and is Peter someone actually? I'm not sure. Dave, I for sure did not know his name until after he was dead. I put him in my notes as hot dog water guy. Um, yeah. And then I had to circle back Ooh, later. Michael and Harriet, I didn't have names go. for for a long time either. Well, Isn't I just, we were talking about fave couples and I also really liked uh, John and Sylvia just because like mm-hmm. aesthetically they they're fucking so cute. And I thought John was so cute. I'm a sucker for a redhead and he was so tall. You and know I fine. love a redhead. The only complaint I have is why did he pick her up by her whole face oh when he came yes! home from the mine to kiss her? He picked her up by her whole face. And then Axel remembered that because when he gets Sylvia later in the movie, he picks her up by her face again. I was like, can everybody stop picking Sylvia up by the head? Like, she's we, just so it. petite that she's... She how is I her like not that would dislocating hurt. from her body? It seems bad, but well, she's I mean, smiling the when end. her boyfriend kisses her in the beginning. Well, that's it's all she, foreshadowing. It's foreshadowing. She, she <laughs> does it's grab. A, yeah, she well, she grabs his arms when he's grabbing. Like she's, I think, pulling herself up on Which his is, arms. Is she holding up her whole body weight with her hands on his arms? Why is he she's picking like her up like pixie. that in the first place? Grab her by the waist cute romantic maybe she likes it monica she we loves you to see it. okay we need you and adam to recreate him, so you <laughs> want me to pick adam's up head. adam by his head that's what <laughs> yeah. you're saying right yes. that's probably better yes we do <laughs> see you if wouldn't you can... be able to do it any other way <laughs> that's, exactly, that's exactly what i want you to do oh my god oh god but okay i mean we, we already talked about what's her name beautiful old woman who i love mabel mabel, mabel. Her so mabel. Didn't talk about her death her let's We've talk about a- her death yeah. really quickly because poor thing she did her best um but oh, she, wow. she do be old she do be frail and he got just got her right by <laughs> the hair um but like i never thought about how hot it gets in a dryer And now I have, you know, and now Mm -hmm. I really, Mm -hmm. really have. And I just am scared of the dryer a little bit now. (laughs) Like she was fucking freed and it was just so fucking funny and and horrifying when the cop comes in or the the sheriff comes in and he's like smelling his pipe. He's like, what's this? That's something that smells weird. Smell? Is it my pipe? Is this bad tobacco? Like, what could it be? <laughs> He's smelling all this different shit. I also appreciate that the killer um turns every single heart upside down. Like, he's anal as shit. Attention like, to he... detail, <laughs> he's he like, got it this. from his predecessor. Yep. He knows. He knows. Valentine. He inherited the Valentussy. Yeah. <laughs> When you say Valentussy, it's th- making me think of Watusi, which is like an old timey song. And someone make a remix of Watusi with Valentussy and send it to us. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, I mean, my favorite thing about the early deaths, they he kind of he here's the difference between um axel and harry is axel does not commit to the bit in quite the same way we get like two maybe three valentines um and they're okay the first two are great the third one pretty lazy frankly um what was the third one again i don't know let me check my notes i just remember that it was not up to par um but the first one is the titty tattoo lady her heart is in a candy box that is given to the mayor um and the valentine heart says 
from the heart comes a warning filled with bloody good cheer remember what happened as the 14th draws near which is gorgeous and also a clear reference to valentine 2001 that they're doing valentine's obviously clearly oh, yeah. a little time wonkiness um <laughs> and then the second one actually mabel gets the second one which is really interesting because she opens it and i was like oh who died off screen um, but then it says roses are red, violets are blue, one is dead, and so are you. Um, so it's like a and little then foreshadowing. He, I know it's so good. It's and then he like pops it says, out. You gonna die today? That's what it says. Right. Um, actually, okay. The third one is not as lazy as I thought. Um, but when Mabel's heart gets um, sent to the the chief, maybe whenever it happens. Oh, that's the one that's like bloody on the ground outside. The and the pack dog, of feral wild dogs, dogs Jesus the Christ. Fer- yeah. f- 40 to 50 feral hogs. <laughs> <laughs> great, great day on Twitter when that happened. Anyway, um, but that Valentine says it happened once, it happened twice, cancel the dance or it'll happen thrice. But oh, then after I that, love the I use lo- of thrice. That one's great. I was just going to say, yeah, I love when great. people use thrice. Yeah, use um, and I I just watched a Golden Girls episode. I didn't start Golden Girls until after the fact, unfortunately. Um, but I just watched a Golden Girls episode where they talk about the word thrice because Rose is really trying to push these of thrice in the song, and I was like, "Good for you, Rose." Um, live so your truth, baby. <laughs> live your truth. She knew what it was about, and so did um, my bloody Valentine. And thank God. Um. But after that, he's just, it's Valentine's Day. He's too much There's on his no free. Time. He doesn't have time to stop. He does well, have a special moment with that shine. one part. No, yeah, let's give him some shine for Dave, okay? Because uh-huh. one, he boils his face in hot dog water. And hot dog water is some of the grossest shit on earth. Like, <laughs> I love hot dogs so much. But hot dog water stinks like shit. And okay. like, how many times have you boiled hot dogs? And then, well, my mom would boil hot dogs and then she'd like leave the pot there until the next day. And then there's like this nasty pot of like a film. hot dog water. Like a congealed layer it. of fat on the top. Yeah. Absolutely nightmarish. And to die in that. Oh, <laughs> I mean, like he's just, yeah. it's just tragic. Cause he's just finally feeling himself got game. He's flirting with that girl with the cool hair. She has the haircut that I want, but I'm too nervous to get um and he's really like he, he even says something to his friend he's like his friend's like you're looking great and he's like yeah and then he's like I'm gonna get a hot dog and then it's, that's the end but like we have to give some shine to our killer for ripping out his heart and throwing it in the hot dog water it's so disgusting right? and then, <laughs> so then it comes disgusting. out all brown like the hot dog same color as the hot dogs Ugh. that's what happens ever... when you cook a heart I guess I'd never would have occurred to me to imagine it before, but I cooked the gizzards um, from a turkey before, you know, the stuff that comes in the bag that's yeah, stuffed yeah, yeah. up its ass. We've yes. cooked that before and that's the color that it turns when you cook it. And so that wasn't surprising to me to see <laughs> new information to have the sickly color. It's not nice. Delicious. Wish I didn't stuffing, wish I didn't though. know. <laughs> If you're into that kind of thing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but Dave's death is brutal, not just because he gets drowned or boiled in hot dog water, not just because his heart gets cut out and put in the hot dog water, but because his body gets stuffed in the freezer and people walk by it like twice before they even notice. John fucking opens the door. He's like- Grabs the beer. Grabs yeah. the beer, but is looking away. Meanwhile, his love of his life is being turned into a shower head. And like- <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> that That's my favorite kill. Even though it's so upsetting because John's reaction is like so fucking sad. Like that boy is not in anything else pretty much. Like that's why I couldn't figure out if John, the character John on IMDb was- the tall redhead because he doesn't Mm -hmm. even have a fucking picture um but like he's you know he does his he acts his little heart out he really does (laughs) here's the thing i know you guys said that this movie is absolutely brutal and like it is but it also isn't and that most of the brutality is like implied or off screen um because 
so much of the gore was cut from this movie. There was like five full minutes of gore that was cut. There was like nine oh. minutes overall that they had to lose, but like four minutes of it was like B-roll character moments, whatever. But like five minutes of gore was cut, including the entirety of Sylvia's death. Like they, the ratings people said like, absolutely no way, not a fucking chance. And that footage just like didn't get preserved. So it didn't no. even, it, they couldn't even add it in later when they like remastered it or, or anything like that i know but it apparently like shoves it through the back of her head somehow yes and That's apparently there's supposed to be a moment to where through. like you see the water coming through her mouth but it's like red with blood um and Ooh. instead you just Ooh. see like an implied shower head you don't you just see like maybe the side of part of yeah, her mouth like, and water like, coming out profile. and so you can only assume that when she was picked up by the head it was fully shoved onto the shower head um but god john sure does an amazing job of making it really horrifying just based on the emotionality like you were saying oh Monica. yeah like it's so heartbreaking it's so sad also okay we skipped a death and it's one of my all-time favorite death okay it's not that good of a death but it's just like the setup for it is so good because we get one of those like spooky like like warning men a spooky old man who gives you a Hat. warning oh, yeah. a classic trope the bartender um, yes i the love bartender. a spooky bartender yeah and it's just like why did they kill well, I don't know. Okay, actually, probably the reason that they killed the spooky bartender is because he's trying to dissuade everyone from having a party. And so Axel was probably like, shut the fuck up. I want them to have a party so I can kill everyone. So maybe that's why he he killed, end up killing him. But like- Or he just like stuck around too long at the mine and then he was like, you shouldn't be at the mine. Okay, yeah. He's setting true. up his prank. Okay, but that's, <laughs> that's what I want to talk about. Because <laughs> he's like, you guys, you stupid idiot kids, don't fuck around on Valentine's Day. Like, listen to, like, remember like, the past. Fuck around and find out. Yeah. Fuck around and find out. And he's like, he goes to the mine and he's like, you stupid little bitches, you're going to have the fright of your life. Like, can we go back in time, make sure he doesn't die, and hire him to do Halloween Horror Nights? Because that was a spooky <laughs> spook right there. He sets up this like Jerry rigged thing where like when you open the door, a fake miners pickaxe comes down, which is dangerous. Like that still could kill someone or maim them. But like he's like drunk. Maybe as it goes up here, maybe. Maybe it goes up, which is less dangerous unless somebody's standing behind the fake miner. There's no way to know. But there's no way to know. You could watch it. <laughs> but there's no way to know. <laughs> but he's like so like and this is how I would die too I'd be like damn I did something so fucking cool look how good this looks let me test it for the up team's time and he opens it that one last time and then the actual miner is there and he's like you stupid idiot watch he out he said fuck around and found out and then he he fucked around and he found out I would have liked to see that death a little bit different too because he mm -hmm. doesn't like pickaxe him like down onto his head he goes up under his chin yeah that little soft spot you have down there which always now i'm i'm like that is a that is a rather uh vulnerable spot of the human your, form your little turkey neck right here oh, now i'm scared <laughs> oh wait we said earlier that it was mabel's heart that had the dogs no it was hap's heart with the dogs because mabel's heart was put in the candy box that she it previously just had the valentine for her her heart did make it in there i think right oh i have no idea it's hard to track all of the different various hearts and where Too they end hearts. up in this movie Too frankly we all because have in mabel's body mabel's death is brutal not just because she gets picked pickaxed to death in the laundromat but then she, she is cooked. yeah not just cooked in the dryer but also her heart is pulled out and inside of her chest cavity there's a little paper valentine's day heart so cute 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 i love a detailed <laughs> kill okay i love a detailed mm -hmm. kill um but okay so now i guess we should dive into the, the party itself i mean we haven't really touched on tj and sarah either um the but drama there, there oh is my god some, the like, drama the love heavy triangle handled. yeah yeah there's a lot of romance in this. It is a Valentine's Day movie, as so there should be romance. Um, but like, seems like TJ is a fucking idiot. I'm just saying, uh, he's, he's he's very like, hot though. He's super hot, and you know who's hotter? Sarah is hotter. Sarah is hotter. Sarah is a gorgeous angel. She should be okay. painted. 
But I would like to point out the one time where TJ was wearing like the button and denim the vest. No, oh, the, little, the button denim that was like partially open with the little bandana. Oh my god, and his whole chest out. The party. Oh, and, so and then, and then the outfit where he was in the cute cream sweater. Oh my god. <laughs> like, Here's the thing. He's a hottie. He's such the, a slut. He's very hot. The men, the men's aesthetic. They brought it. In this movie. Like, they served. They That's brought it. what oh, I'm man. looking for Their is that fashion. Valentussy, Why don't right? men wear jeans that fit like that anymore? Because like men don't have asses like that mm-hmm. anymore. Some men, but my man has an ass like that. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> don't listen to this episode, Adam. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> does. I have a dub truck. He should be so lucky to have his butt complimented on the podcast. I'm a lucky woman is all I'm going to say. Um, we are let the internet know that Adam, Monica's boyfriend. My has boyfriend a- has a dump truck ass. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day to me. <laughs> Can you hear me? Is going to bust the door down? <laughs> Men yeah, every doing man, your squats, okay? <laughs> listen up, yeah. Every or like, look, if you don't have the booty, some people don't. That's fine. You could wear the outfits where you have a little bandana tied around your neck, and you oh, have your denim yes. shirt open to your mid chest, and you have your chest hair all gorgeous. And then if you happen to need to go down into the mines for some reason, when you put your coverall on on top, you still have it open to your med chest so that your full ass chest is out. That's for slut behavior. Exactly. Like, here's the thing, but it's so sexy. It's He's so, sexy. so fine. I like blue colored men, baby. Chest hair. <laughs> oh, I love chest hair. It's wonderful. It's a wonderful Ooh. thing. Anyway, uh, before we get too deep down the chest hair road. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm already there. Uh, here's the thing. <laughs> like, um, we're just all silent for a while. We just mm. needed a moment to contemplate. Ah. Um, <laughs> but the thing is that Sarah was dating TJ. TJ left to go west and seek his fortune or something. I don't know. Was he going to like um, go fucking try to act or something? TJ <laughs> left to go have his flop era. Um, but here's and the thing. They're in Canada. So did he go to Vancouver? <gasps> <laughs> Hold on. I have the perfect diversity reference for this Canadian movie. Um, You're not going to get it because you guys don't digress the way that I do, but someone out there is going to like this. Um, We're going to British Columbia. Marielle and I used to say that all the time because it's from a Craig episode. And if you don't get it, then you don't get it. But the girls who get it, get it. Um, and it's that's in Easter Western Canada. For Degrassi. So <laughs> for my eventual Degrassi spinoff podcast. Um, I don't know. In my head, because like I know this is in Canada and I feel like mm-hmm. whatever little town they're in is definitely like an Atlantic c- Canadian coast town. And they're like, he went west. And I was just like, to Vancouver? <laughs> He so, went to Toronto to be in Degrassi, maybe. The Degrassi, honestly, the kids honestly, of Degrassi Street, that had started. Degrassi Junior High probably was around this time. When did that start? Okay, but that's I, really funny if maybe they were like way east Canada and then they just went <laughs> to Toronto, which is like right above New York. <laughs> and they're like, he went out west. It's just oh, Toronto. He went out God. west to be on the kids of Degrassi Street. I just like it's 1979 happy. to 1982 the timing fits TJ TJ you yourself. well okay just to roast him a little bit more like how man is it that like he went out there had his flop era and he's like I can speak to no one about my pain and so I'll never speak to my lover again Which and is then so he comes stupid. back and he's just like what you've moved on to someone else TJ it's been years and you didn't call. You didn't write. Has anyone seen Across the Universe? It reminds me of that part where she's like, you never wrote to me ever again. And it's because he fell in love with someone else. How the fuck was Sarah oh. supposed to know what was going on? Woof. Um, here's the thing about that moment that I love, though. Um, so, like, again, TJ left. She started dating Axel. TJ comes back after his flop era and is like, she didn't wait for me. Me, me, me. The stupid baby. Um, but then he's like, I'm going to win her back. And there's a moment, first of all, 
at first it seems like he and Axel are gonna be friends about it. They would do a harmonica duet, oh, which is how all men should part. solve their problems, I think, personally. Oh. Um, but then they do fight in the mines, and then TJ like runs out, sprints to his car, zooms away into town essentially kidnaps Sarah to put her in the car. He like pushes her down by her head into the car, but she's smiling by the way. She loves it. Here's the thing that I want to talk about. In that scene, she has her hair in two braids, just like Sydney has her hair in now. So she is in theme actually, as it turns out. Um, And then when they're out on the cliffs and he's like, do you remember this spot? Her hair is long and down. She took her hair out of those braids so she could have her romantic, dramatic, wind oh, yeah. blowing in her hair moment on the cliffs as they confess their love to each other she was she planned this okay also like have you had braids in the wind they flop around like ropes they whip you back and forth it hurts so she's just being <laughs> practical right it's like i'm just saying she had her book good. cover romance novel moment out on the moors she saw his chest hair she's not fucking around it's so romance novel with her long hair down out of her braids his slutty little chest out it was a beautiful moment though I was like that scene goes on for like quite some time and it is so like (laughs) it's like a different movie it's like a beautiful (laughs) romance about around the moors of Can- Canada, it's beautiful. <laughs> and then, like five seconds later, like women are turning into shower heads. Range. This movie has mm-hmm. range. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but like, okay, flash forward. They're at the party at the mine. Um, which like which first- s- those stupid ass bitches. It is a sick party spot, though, because they do have a True. pool table. Like, they do have a pretty, pool table. And they do have communal cool. showers down in the mines when things get really crazy. They want to have their foam party. Um, and they did all shower together earlier in the movie, all the dudes. And it was very sexy and it was very homoerotic. And Hollis and Howard got extremely close together while naked. Ooh. And apparently yes. the actors really were naked while they were filming, which is so funny because there, there was no reason they needed to be. We didn't see anybody's butts. <laughs> They were like, they were like, they were like I'm a method actor. I'm, I'm going to get naked with actor. my friends. <laughs> Listen, men do like to get naked with their friends. Like they just like yeah, doing everyone it. Everyone does. Everyone likes to be naked with their friends. Nudie time um, with my I've, girls. I've been naked with both of y'all. Yeah, we've been at oh, like a, the the, the pool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We spa. We spa. Um, important. Um, but so much of this movie is just guys being dudes and i and i love it it is the perfect um fellas being fellas movie which is so funny actually because one of the um imdb trivia pieces is that entertainment weekly ranked this movie number 17 on their quote guilty pleasures testosterone edition um, and the March 30th, 2007 issue. And the Entertainment Weekly mention is just an Easter egg for later. You'll find out later. Oh. Yeah. Um, okay, wait. So where were we? Oh, in at the party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, it's just so, so unfortunate that they realize that there's been like a dead body right next to them for like 45 minutes. Like long time five five seconds after half the fucking party goes in the Please. tutu twain down into the mines like their little roller coaster ride marnie Bitch, slash patty you have this fancy do. new dress why are you gonna get it all dirty and sooty this just not smart she wanted to cheer up sarah after axel and tj got into it at the party like, and why that's a why though because Sarah like doesn't want to go and Patty's like if I have to go you have to go it's like Patty this whole thing is your idea Patty you've condemned us all to death (laughs) how do you feel I would have liked to ride the choo-choo train but I would also yeah same honestly same I would have to like I would have been like okay we're at the bottom now let's go back up okay bye like and that would have been enough for me you know maybe during the daytime although I guess that's when the people are working in the mines do they have yeah they should be in a union there should be a miners coal miners union do they have the weekends off maybe are conditions better for miners in Canada I don't know somebody call miners let us know my thing is that if 
I had the opportunity to go down and explore a mine with a miner who knew what the fuck they were doing. I would fucking do it. No questions asked. Would I do it on the anniversary of a crazy fucking murder? Blah, blah, blah. Axe, pickaxe. Everyone's dead. Three people are dead already. No, no, Mm -hmm. no. What? What? Come on. Yeah. Let's think these things through. This like most slashers probably I think is fair to say. I would say I think most is fair. Um, This is the kind of movie that is like cops are useless Um, because Chief Newbie is there and he sure is trying to investigate to a degree but for him that means kind of running around looking worried and not telling anybody what's going on and then calling the lady at the mental hospital to be like hey I need these records and then she says we don't have them and we've never had them and we don't know anything and sorry best of luck and then he goes you need to get this but like that's the extent of his investigation um and he truly just never loops anybody in at any time not even the other cop he's working with the other cop when we see the feral dog scene and he's like gets his candy box and he's trying to be like sneaky he's like hey can you go check on something while he opens it because he literally doesn't even want the other cop to know if there's a spree of murders going on he newbie thought he could handle it all on his own little did he realize it was in his name newbie newbie fucking fool he's a fucking fool but okay i mean it's part of the genre though slashers well okay i have a question and it's Uh a fucked up question but Uh if you were in a scenario where your sexy chest haired lover comes down and tells you that everyone is being killed upstairs and you must leave immediately would you leave Blondie and not that cute boy who have gone off on their own to die or would you go find them like Like they all want to do yeah would you go searching the caves to find them or would you leave immediately I think maybe there's a middle ground where you all stay together as a group and go looking for them but but they really sent individuals off on their own, which was not wise. Um, My first if you're thought was in the like, moment, what I, I would do? fucking leave. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I babe. would be like, bye. Um, <laughs> I'd would... be like, I'd be like, y'all, c- hello. Like I'd yell to them, and then we don't hear anything. They're dead. <laughs> I simply cannot go on the record on another episode saying that I would abandon my friends to save myself. I've done I haven't it once forgotten and I got a lot of meters shit down on cage. I will so. never forget 47 <laughs> meters down on cage. What are we going to say, Sydney? Here's the thing. I would send like the women back and then like as the man go and like look for them, you know? Chivalry is not dead in Sydney's world. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm all for, uh, you know, equality of the, of all genders. Um, and until it in comes this moment, to I am murderer. a woman yeah, and I am a child. child. I'm yeah. a woman and a child it's and like, I should go first. I'm a baby. <laughs> I'm a baby yeah, woman. I so I really fit the demographic here and I must go back up. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Here's the thing. Um, Glad we're on the same page. <laughs> Women, men, equality, but like, quite frankly, I personally want to be treated better. So <laughs> I'm gonna go on up. <laughs> it doesn't matter if I'm dating a man, woman, or a non-binary person; they should all be willing to die for me. <laughs> and, and that's the bottom line. <laughs> that's the bottom line. I'm BB. Send me to safety. Yeah. So one thing I will say that pissed me off about this movie is like. I want to know what the fuck happened to that couple because I could not for the life of me understand what was happening to them that caused their death. Like, Yeah, that was another cut scene. What, like, was a chain thrust through both of them as they were it's fucking? It's a Jason X reference. Um, it oh. was while they were screwing, they got screwed. Screwed. Dude. <laughs> amazing a clear reference to jason x perfect um it was it a screw i couldn't tell what i was or like looking a drill at. or like whatever drill but yeah something like that that you use in the oh mines. that IMDb. makes a lot more sense to me it looked like like a bike chain except very mm-hmm. large and i was like how would that even impale them yeah 
IMDb Trivia says, originally the death of Mike and Harriet was supposed to be shown on screen. The elaborate sequence showed the miner drilling an auger into the couple. That's what it's called, I guess, apparently. An ah, auger. an auger. Um, oh, I'm very familiar really with augers. Yeah, you know, not... we all know, obviously. Know. Of, course. An auger. of course. Of course. Um, the elaborate sequence showed the miner drilling an auger into the couple as they made love. The MPAA rejected this scene outright, and it was completely cut from the film, unlike the other murder sequences, which were edited down. The scene has yet to be restored on uncut releases of My Bloody Valentine. So actually, maybe that was what I was thinking about when I said that Sylvia's shower head death scene was chopped down earlier. Although the blood out of her mouth with the water, that I definitely remember from in here. Oh, that's so frustrating because that sounds cool. I want to see yeah, that. They cut down a lot of stuff. Okay, here's the part about Sylvia. Um, The director has stated many times roughly nine minutes of footage had been cut to secure an R rating instead of an X rating. Because here's the thing. um, Friday the 13th had just come out the year before. And as we know, it does have some moments of, like, you see that arrow coming through Kevin Bacon. Ooh, like, what? Yeah. Um. Love but that. that movie, I think, had maybe a little bit of a controversial reception. And then also John Lennon was murdered. Um, and so people really didn't want any violence after that, I guess. Um, so this movie like got the, the chop in the, the same way. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. A clear mm-hmm. reference to Scream 3. Um But apparently in 2009, a special edition of the film was released with most of the gory footage put back into the film. The only footage missing is the on-screen impalement of Michael and Harriet. Um, But I don't think that was the version that I saw, at least. I don't know about you guys, because I think that's like a 93-minute cut, and the version that I saw was 90 minutes. Yeah, I didn't see that good, good gore. Too bad. But yeah, it says when John discovers Sylvia's corpse, there was originally supposed to be a shot of the water coming through Sylvia turning blood red, which was said to have deteriorated over the years. Um, Although apparently a still of the Sylvia scene can still be found online with a very fake looking dummy. So I'm going to have to go looking for that later. Um, But the 93 minute version that I guess is the the 2009 one um, shows approximately 80 to 85 percent of the way the movie was supposed to be seen so but apparently it's so gory um that actor carl moreau i'm reading from imdb trivia again and i don't know who he plays but actor carl moreau said that oh dave this is dave dave said that while in his death scene makeup no one would eat lunch with him um which is so funny and then there's another trivia piece somewhere in here that says um they never could eat a hot dog again (laughs) probably not um but someone when they saw the makeup of one scene and they didn't specify what makeup design it was um but but the director when they saw it according to makeups effects artist thomas r berman one of his gory creations was realistic enough that director george mahalka threw up at the sight of it Oh my God, I was just thinking, the whole time you've been reading these, I was thinking somebody threw up. I bet it's somebody threw up. It's somebody threw up. Somebody (laughs) threw up, baby. Threw up. Good for them. Um, (laughs) Let's talk about it. It also shipped a dummy corpse to set in a coffin, apparently, because, like, I guess, how else are you going to transport a dummy corpse? Um, And the Canadian customs officers, upon receiving it and inspecting packages that go through customs, very alarmed. They threw and up. fair enough. <laughs> I mean, valid. Canadians customs <laughs> threw up. When they saw- <laughs> right. Because it's like, I'm sure corpses come through all of the time, but they're probably marked as a corpse. And this was not a real corpse. It was just, a, yeah, it was just a s- luggage or whatever, but in a coffin. So was, they opened it probably to be like, what's going on? Is something being smuggled? And they probably found the most like, it who do you think it was i mean it could have been sylvia because that imdb trivia just said that it was a very fake looking dummy in the screenshot it could oh. have been um Mabel. mabel's fried up looking body oh, yeah. flopping out of the dryer i'd barf if um, i saw that and i didn't like, know that it was fake right it sounds like dave had to be in his makeup so i don't think that yeah. they used a dummy for him but so what my guess would be Howard? that was mabel's corpse in there what about oh Howard? could have been Howard that's a really good guess actually because they would need a dummy to do that to drop, drop scene yeah oh I was like who the fuck is Howard Howard's that <laughs> idiot 
He's <laughs> that fucking idiot. He's so he dumb, but he's hilarious. He is funny at one or two moments. Yeah. He, he really yeah. keeps trying to do it. He does a spooky prank down in the mines, and Hollis does a spooky prank down in the mines. And Hap, as we know earlier, was trying to do his spooky prank with the minor jerry rigged. Um, this is a town that's traditions are Valentine's Day and Franks, clearly. Yeah, but the, the other thing is like if you do a prank, you fucking die. Like it's just like, oh, you tried a good to scare me. Nobody it's... ever pranked me. Yeah. <laughs> I can do you remember pranks your prank era pranks. on the pod. I <laughs> right? am in my prank era, baby. <laughs> you better watch out then, Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> You're at death door. You didn't know. <laughs> I don't live in Valentine's Bluffs. I'm safe. Um, okay, let's talk about Hollis because, like, is the saddest moment of all time. Um, Truly. Like, the fact that he gets shot in the head with a nail gun. One, I just have to say that I appreciate the killer using many different tools. Um, mm -hmm. Innovative. He's a renaissance man, um, and I like that a lot. But it's just so sad that, you know, he kind of, Hollis just kind of, like, got lobotomized at first. Uh, it's, I really was hoping he might survive because I truly did forget that he died. And I was like, the guy in Happy Gilmore has a nail in his head. Um, but unfortunately, I have also seen Final Destination 3, and so I knew it was not to be. It could have been like that guy that we learned about in school where he got a big pipe through yeah, his head, and then he was the just, pipe. like, mean after. I you feel know? like we've talked about that on one of our episodes. Phineas Gage. It comes up a lot. Phineas Gage is, is eternal. He's always around. Always, always relevant. Taught people about the brain. Um, but, you know... The, this is the thing that I'll say. I understand that Marnie, Marnie, Marnie slash Patty <laughs> is upset. In my notes, it says Marnie the entire time. I understand that Patty is Very upset. I too would be upset if my perfect, perfect boyfriend with a perfect, perfect mustache and a wonderful personality and a cutie face and everything was shot in the head with, with two big nails. I would be very upset. But and then dies is, right in front of you? Yes. Oh, he hobbles over but, like, just to die in her arms? But like where Romantic. what's what is wrong with Patty slash Marnie where like her will to live does not kick in and her fear of heights like overwhelms that like I was just like bitch climb up the goddamn fucking ladder stop complaining I will kill you I love it when Sarah just slaps her yeah Sarah's doing her in the face. Boom. she's like and girl Patty, it doesn't even you want to die just, too like, hugs her oh, Patty my wife. I love Patty, but when she was on the ladder, I was, was like, struggling. I will throw Patty to the ground. <laughs> she yeah, and she was like, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just going to stay right here. And I was like, no, you're girl, not. That is not an option. That Although she did just not. see her boyfriend die and she was climbing a ladder in heels. Like, I understand. Those and then it turned out maybe also. it was not the end of the world that they didn't get higher because um, then the the killer was at the top, even though the the killer, as we know, was with them while they were climbing up the ladder. And then he just, no wonder he hustled away so fast because they kept being like, Axel, you have to slow down. Patty's not going fast enough, which is also like, first of all, what is Axel slowing down going to do even if he wasn't oh, the killer? Yeah, he um, was but he was the point. killer. So he was hustling up to the top so that he could throw Howard down the mine yeah. shaft and get them back down to the bottom. Oh, oh. I didn't even my little see baby my brain. Cat. Cat. My little baby oh. brain still was like, the killer's out there at that point. I forgot <laughs> it was Axel. Um, I will say that uh -huh. stupid but funny and smart a little bit where he's like, oh, I drowned. And that's how he threw them <laughs> off the trail. Drowning. He's like, oh, it I just suddenly immediately drowned. He, like The thing is that um, I, at that point, remembered he was the killer. And so I was like, okay, TJ is making the right choice that after one glug, he was like, he's dead and there's no hope. We have to keep going. But one glug, if he wasn't the killer, one bubble comes up and you're like, anyway, that's it for him. <laughs> Not nice. <laughs> But wait, but imagine him under the water, just like, whoop, like letting like a few bubbles Bubble. come up every, every few seconds. Icon behavior. <laughs> it was just his hat. He put his hat down with bubbles in it and then it flipped over and the bubbles come up. That makes sense why he's not wet later. But also I like what I'm envisioning, so I might hold on like, to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Later we see like that was like that makes you suspicious of Axel. You're like, okay, what's this? But then we get a 
TJ suspicion where he's like telling the girls like go up this thing and he like runs around the corner and then just kind of like disappears. Oh yeah, he gets crumpled in rocks or something. Bunch of rocks right? fall. Like, oh yeah, so they both have a suspicious pseudo death. Yeah. But the thing is, I wasn't suspicious either time because I was like, it's Harry. <laughs> I was like, it's Harry. These yeah, boys are nice Harry. boys. Yeah. These, These are, are good. We boys. already know. <laughs> yeah, I don't me. think we learn that Harry is out of the picture until we already know that it's Axel. Right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm looking at yeah, like now. It's like a one two mm-hmm. punch. Yeah. It's only after the Axel reveal, and it's only after the reveal of Axel's motives, even, um, that Sarah and Teej are like running out of the mine and they pass Newbie, and they're like, it's not Harry. And he's like, I know. Harry Warden died five years ago. And it would have been a little fun to do like a ghosty moment in the way where it's like, he died five years ago on this very day kind of thing. But it was not that. It was different. It's both would have been fun. This is better, probably. Than a ghost. <laughs> on Valentine's Day very... and Valentine's Bluff. It's like Valentine's the same energy. <laughs> Right. He just like expired one time. Um, what are you going to do? He, he chugged along for a long time. Um, but the, the motives actually are very, um, silent night, deadly night, which is so interesting because we haven't watched that movie yet when we watched this movie for Valentine's day last year. And that movie actually comes out in 1984. So it's after this one. So I wonder if they saw this one and saw that like snippet of the motivations and were like, what if that was our whole movie, but a different holiday. Um, Cause Axel's dad is the one of the, like, what is it? Foreman supervisors who um, Harry comes to kill. And so little baby Axel was there when his dad was pickaxed to desk. At, uh, well, <laughs> you did your best and nobody could ask for more. <laughs> We're going to move straight through. We're going to move on. Um, but like the little child actor who, <laughs> who like is just like covered in blood, like under the bed, like uh, freaking out, just like incredible, incredible face acting. It was a mm-hmm. beautiful face journey. Um, but I mean, just something to note. We love a slow moving train chase scene. <laughs> <laughs> so quiet the whole time. Nobody <laughs> makes a peep. And they're go they're moving so slow. They're going so <laughs> slow. <laughs> and they just like climb from cart to cart, complete silence. It's like I it's- it makes sense if you think about how when you're in an emergency you're just like silent and focused, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, um but as far as the movie goes, there's not even like really much music in that moment. Like it no. really just is quiet. <laughs> Dude, that that part of the movie gives me big 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 thunder mountain vibes from from oh. disneyland you know that part of big thunder mountain where you like really slowly go up this <laughs> incline and you're like holy shit this is gonna be insane and then it's the shittiest drop ever like nothing happens could we contact disney for press tickets to go to disneyland <laughs> so that we can get some social content on <laughs> big thunder mountain yeah. as a clear reference i'm sure that they will say yes and so for sure We'll have our yeah, people yeah, talk yeah. to their people. Uh, this is uh, such an appropriate crossover for them. <laughs> okay, well, let's just talk about the little final segment of this movie before we get to our segments because it's slow moving, but w- it just shows that Sarah is such a down bitch because she could have just rid that train out of there and been fine, but she jumps off the train to <laughs> not to shovel to fight. not hit. She gets the shovel. She does not take the shovel to hit Axel. She's like, here, babe, here's the shovel. <laughs> right? She literally, like, gets lady is a man's almost, job. She gets almost in between them. Like, she's about to get hit. And she's like, ah, take the shovel, take the shovel. <laughs> it's like she a did, very okay. faulty pass off. But, like, it works. Patty, Pat, Patty had her rough moments after Hollis's death where she absolutely lost it. Sarah really kept it together for her. Once Patty dies in front of Sarah, Sarah has her own freak out moment where she becomes a little bit useless for a while. 
But she still there's, does some stuff. But there's oh, literally one through. point. Yeah. But she literally... she has her fall apart moment too. Everybody yeah. gets one. There's literally one part where TJ is like, Sarah, move, get out of the way. Like, and she's just like right behind him. He's like trying to back up. Oh like, my yeah. God. Also, there was a moment you- where she fully froze when she saw the minor. And I was like, does she recognize Axel? Um, but I don't, I don't know that she did. Well, but maybe, I mean, like she obviously doesn't say anything in that moment, but she is the one when they're in like the weird little cave after the shovel fight that like pulls Axel's mask off to be like, oh, it was you all along. They don't say that, but that's the vibe. Yeah, that's the vibe. It's surely the vibe. Um, and oh, what? I saw something in my notes and then maybe it was not as good a realization as I thought it was actually when I had it, Um, (laughs) which was that when they're passing Chief Newbie, when they're going up the tunnel after they've escaped and he's coming down, Chief Newbie like freezes when he sees them for a long moment. And I couldn't figure out why, but it's because they didn't know where to go to find the killer they didn't know where the killer was they just knew the killer was down in the mine but then when he saw them covered in the limestone dust that's why we got the limestone dust explanation earlier on it's only in the old abandoned tunnels because it was used to help dampen the explosions or whatever and keep the wood from rotting Um, and so when he sees it on them he knows exactly where to go and that's also because that is that not the area where Harry originally was trapped? That's the vibe that yeah. I got because it that's, looks that's scorched. why those tunnels are abandoned because those yeah. were the okay. Harry that's Warden explosion tunnels, cannibalism tunnels. Okay, and so like they they beat Axel right, and then the whole thing mm-hmm. ex- implodes well, on once top she, of like, him. Pulls his mask off. I think he kind of freezes and malfunctions. Yeah. That's and they get him. The little flashback of like his whole him in the bed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But like, okay, so then they escape, they're running away, and then they hear all like the the entire town comes to come fuck Axel up essentially. And they're like the going goes, through all the rubble alive. trying yeah. to yeah and he's alive. And Sarah's like I will I will jump into yeah, to action right now to f- find this man and look at him. So she like obviously like cares about Axel still, which yeah. I was like, he just killed every single person that you care about. But all right. Including besides TJ, Patty. including your best friend, mm-hmm. Marnie Patty? slash Patty. Um, and, but like, I'm so glad that she has that aneurysm and runs back down because we get the iconic, most hilarious <laughs> lines that I've ever heard in my entire life. Like, I didn't even write it down. I was like, oh, I thought it written down. Please, please read it. <laughs> he goes, Hannah, girl, I'll be waiting in hell for you. Harry, Harry, I'm coming. This whole fucking town is going to die. We're coming back, you bastards. Sarah, be my bloody Valentine. Daddy's gone away. Harry Warden made you pay. And then and he's, he's only like, got one arm. Yeah, his arm is like ripped off and a bloody stump. <laughs> and it's well, amazing. The, and he, didn't he really lets they, his freak flag fly. Mm-hmm. He, <laughs> he got caved in and then they found his arm and he just yanked himself free. Mm-hmm. That's that is commitment. Yeah. I'm sorry. I ever doubted his commitment. That's commitment. <laughs> and that's my bloody Valentine. Fuck. <laughs> but the maniacal laughter oh, as that- he's like running down the tunnel into the darkness. And then it goes to the credits with an original, my bloody Valentine credit song. Oh, inc- the song was incredible. I was trying to Shazam it to see if it would come up, and it didn't. They wanted to release it as a single, apparently. they I'm going to say this wrong, and you're going to make fun of me because I'm not a music person. Um, is, is um, what do you call records? Single? A, with the what? V word. A single? Vi- vinyl? 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 Which one? Vinyl. vinyl. Okay. Um, vinyl. According to an... Vinyl. vinyl. I read, I don't speak. Um, 
According to an interview by the Terror Trap composer Paul Zaza, I'm assuming is how you pronounce his name because that seems fun, um, spoke about wanting to create a different kind of musical motif for each of the individual murders, as well as make the music have a drippy, damp, creepy sound to it, like in the mind setting itself. He also stated that the end credit song, The Ballad of Harry Warden, was written because the movie producers wanted a song that could be a hit single on a vinyl record. But here's the weird part, though. It says they ran out of funding, and so the Ballad of Harry Warden was written instead. But, like, instead of the Ballad of Harry Warden, that's what you just said. So, oh, I guess they're saying they wanted a hit song that could be on vinyl, but they didn't do that. So they gave us the Ballad of Harry Warden instead, and they're just ignoring the fact that the Ballad of Harry Warden is a banger. Right? I was like, that song slaps. And it's on YouTube. You can find it on YouTube and listen to it. And okay, I did yeah, before we recorded. Put it. We got to put it in the reference notes. I'll put it on social too. I'll make sure to highlight it. Don't Everybody worry, guys. Know. Wait, Don't okay. worry, spookies. Okay, but Wait. now they could just play the Machine Gun Kelly song, My Bloody Valentine. <laughs> or any song from the band, My Bloody Valentine. No, no, we're doing the Machine Gun Kelly one because he's <laughs> yeah. engaged to Megan Fox and therefore. And she's course. in that music video and it is yeah. a good music video. It is. It, it was. Is. It is. It's wonderful. Although we recently found an interview with some questionable quotes from him. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. He's super young, problematic. Yeah, he's very problematic. Do you guys know that? <laughs> oh, so it turns out, you, like we always say, no, men don't deserve rights. So, I mean, what are you going to do? <laughs> we do always yeah, say yeah. that. Also, the deeper you I would Google, like, the darker it goes with Machine Gun Kelly. So beware. I also would like to shout out the uh, My Bloody Valentine remake with Jensen Ackles in it. Does it have Jensen, Supernatural star Jensen Ackles? Supernatural <laughs> star Jensen Ackles is in. Can we I've never watch seen that it. together? Yes, I think Next we have year. to. Next year. <laughs> no, okay. Well, I don't know about that. But no, we <laughs> let's, should let's watch it screen it first. Let's watch I want to sure, watch sure, it sure. for fun, fun, for fun, okay, fun, for fun first. Fun. Yeah, yeah, for fun, fun. Speaking of things that are fun, fun, how could this movie be gayer? Um, I, would I like think to the, s- I think the oh. dicks could have touched in the shower. <laughs> they did, they did, they did. That's I want to see it. They did. They were. They. They <laughs> did. <laughs> I think the okay. dicks could have touched in the shower. Sure. Yeah, that would be gay. That would be gay. I think that the harmonica battle was pretty gay. (laughs) Here's the Mm -hmm. thing. Also, the men, like, cooking food on the engine of the car is gay. Guys being dudes. One (laughs) says, don't go poke in my meat, and I wrote gay in my notes. (laughs) What the fuck were they cooking? Meat. Turkey. (laughs) Because someone is like, I thought we were going to do roast beef, and then Hollis makes fun of him and says, turkey for the turkey. (laughs) And that's gay. Also, there's a moment, I don't remember what it was exactly, but I wrote how we're joking about Hollis grabbing him bisexual. Oh, Hollis Hollis is is a bisexual. bisexual. Have you seen his mustache? Hollis (laughs) is bisexual. All of these men dress up like bisexual men. All of them. Like, this is what a bisexual man looks like. You don't work in the mines with your boys doing harmonica battles and come out How you pass the time. Like, come on. How you pass the time. It's just like, I feel like that harmonica battle, they were like, we're such good friends and we're having a wonderful time but we must pretend to hate each other now. Like, I feel like is it they a were duet deciding or is it a duel? to fight, you know? Mm-hmm. After Here's that, the they were like, we must put our love for each other, our sexual love for each other They should have just been a throuple. That's the solution. They the should have just been and- like, Sarah, we can't do this anymore because we are actually in love and not no, you. No, a thruple. Because here's the thing. Patty literally makes a thruple joke to Sarah and then they are like giggling about it as and being like, okay, but aren't you down? <laughs> but could a man have a boyfriend and a girlfriend? Yeah. Because I think absolutely. But it just depends on how Sarah- you think about it. The girlfriend also has two boyfriends. You're just putting it in the man's perspective. It's really about her. That's the thing. I think that Tej and Axel should, they should only do, they call him that at some points. Um, 
they, they also call him Jesse have... at one point too. That was jarring, right? Which was like, I was like, who's like, that? What the J Jesse. stands for, I guess. What's the T stand for? Like, what is the T Thomas stand Jesse for? Theodore Jefferson. Jesse Hanniger. Who knows? Right? Like, what um, does the T stand for? It's for the Tussy part of Val and Tussy. <laughs> um, but but Axel and Teed should not cross swords they should only have homoerotic harmonica battles and then they're both sarah's boyfriends i think that's the solution um and no, i no. think they explicitly talk about it in the text of the movie and maybe no murders would have happened if they could have just gotten on board with that maybe i mean no, who knows no, no, for no. sure tj Probably and axel still, but... are docking and sarah's watching don't no there has Google to be if you full don't know what it is. penetration between Tej and Axie boy over there, you know. Axie boy, Ugh. that actually he does like pick axes, so that's a good no, nickname for thematic. him. Yeah. It's thematic. Yeah. Okay, well then that. Also, also Patty, and Patty and Sarah Hollis kiss. and I. Patty and Sarah kiss. Patty and Hollis and I are are a throuple as well. <laughs> oh, so Hollis might be the only you. man to deserve nice things by having multiple. He can have two girlfriends. He can have as Patty. many girlfriends as he wants. Hollis yeah, I love deserve. that for you. That does actually really work with your your vibe would fit really well with their two Don't vibes. you think? I think we I could really be really so. happy together. <laughs> I think so too. And I support you, you wholeheartedly. I will move heaven and earth to make these fictional people alive in 2022. <laughs> Let me write my own little self-insert fanfic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, where does Maddie Lily fit into this? Oh, God. I want to see Matthew Lillard in any of these outfits. He'd be an iconic True. Axel because I want to see him harmonic so battle good. with Teej. Yeah, I think that he would be an amazing Axel because just imagine they'd probably give him a few more lines in this psychotic mm -hmm. uh, monologue at the end. His um, so he could he really been able curve to do. it. Uh -huh. okay, but he could be a great John because I would <gasps> like he's tall enough to be like to like pick to lift up somebody up by their face, face. <laughs> jesus christ yeah. and then he doesn't he have to die he can try it with one of you guys when we meet him and then we'll see if that is bad or not i honestly don't want that i feel like my head would come off and uh well that's my why body is heavy and my head i think is one of the smaller parts of my body so i just don't think that well, makes a lot of sense <laughs> he can try with sydney okay perfect i'm down <laughs> Matthew Lillard, grab my head, please. Matthew Lillard, pick Sydney up by her face, please. <laughs> very, very alarming. Deeply alarming. Platonically, though. Platonically, for sure. Just for reasons. He's married. He's married. Yeah. We're, we would never be um, inappropriate with Maddie Lilly. We would always respect all of his boundaries. Yes. It's true. I mean, seriously. Um, if you're listening, Matthew. <laughs> Matthew, we would be so respectful. So respectful. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Who's the dumb bitch? Um, I think it's Steve I think. It's the cop. Okay, and also, it's TJ for leaving in the first place. Yes. Yeah, TJ, that's stupid. TJ that's, for... That's dumb bitch behavior. Being like, I failed, and so I will make every part of my life fail. Like, I can't fess right? up to the fact that I flopped. Like, so I will ruin my thing. one true love. That is such toxic masculinity. And I would expect better from Tej with his yeah. harmonic play. You know what I mean? Like, come on, Tej. We all make mistakes. But frankly, to be like, I can't let my girlfriend know that I'm struggling emotionally. Like, if you can't let your girlfriend know, who are you going to let know? And like, obviously, the answer for him was nobody. But that's bad. Don't do that. Don't be like Tej. Don't be like Tej. Except for fashion wise, be exactly like Tej. <laughs> Dress exactly like Tej. Go but, bring but, me out onto the beautiful Canadian moors like yeah, Tej. Gorgeous, stunning. Um, so he gets a nomination, but I think for sure the the true award and honor goes to Chief Newbie because if he had clued in anybody at any point, maybe Do the anything. kids would not all be at the mine having a party going down into the bowels of the mine blah 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 you know what I mean like he told absolutely nobody and I understand that he was like they're gonna freak out which like yeah they would but guess what they wouldn't do throw a party at the mine for valentine's day so 
I think we'd prefer to have the party canceled and people a little upset. Instead, Mabel died, you know? And it's like, she gave you chocolates. So you little bitch. Justice for Mabel. Justice for Mabel, Mabel. most of all. Justice for Patty and Hollis, obviously, my partners. But justice for Mabel, most of all. Justice for Mabel. My girl. My girl. All right, well, that brings us to our Knives Out of Fives. And so, Chelsea, what did the people have the right idea about this movie? Did they no. love it? Ugh. The people it was at too the time, early. like Teach, were in their flop era. Um, because so on IMDb, this movie only has a 6.3 out of 10, Abysmal. which is generous compared to Rotten Tomatoes, on which it has a 58% rotten from critics and a 52% rotten from audiences, and they're wrong. It's just so sad that no one has taste. Nobody. No, it's really sad. It's really, it's really sad because I'm giving this a five out of five. (laughs) I'm also giving this a five out of five. I'm giving it a five guys out of five. I'm down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Straight A's. Um, it's so good. But are we gonna just like all give our review at once? It's so good. Do we, do we so do good. a one, two, three, go situation? <laughs> one, two, three. One, two, three. I People love don't it. know what this means, but that's for us to know. And one day they'll find out. Are you ready? We're ready. Okay. Oh, one, two, three. God, wait, that's complicated. Because how are we going to say it on go if I am saying the word go? We'll take a It's pause. a silent go. It's a silent go. And you'll are know. We, are we saying the silent? No, go. you the said score? go. And then there's a. Uh, a pause you do a little beat and then you just blurt out okay why you so i'll say blurt out why and then yeah. i'll cue oh. you with my finger but we'll yeah. also do the countdown you know yeah. what the listeners are gonna love this <laughs> they're gonna love this bit and then are we saying five knives out of fives i think we should say the whole thing okay good 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 i was like are we just gonna say our thoughts all at once so it's like, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> no let's say five knives out of fives you guys ready okay, okay. Yeah, yeah 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 all right okay. right right so, so one, two, three, go situation. Go on, go, not on three. Wow. Is that how I say it? What Where we say? go on go and not on three. Okay. One, two, three, go. Five, 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 five. five. <laughs> What? How are you going to remind me? I think you have like the list. That's it. We're not doing it another time. That's that's it. We, well, we tried. <laughs> Bye, <And spookies>. that's, <laughs> and, and that's my bloody Valentine. <laughs> we don't need to say anything else. That's it. It's perfect, and we are not. <laughs> we can't measure up. <laughs> We've done all we can. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, Sydney, I think you should introduce next week's movie because you're the only one who's seen it. So next week, we're doing a movie that, once again, only I have seen. <laughs> and it might seem like it is an old movie, but alas, it's not. It's from 2016, and that is The Love Witch. And this movie is female-led female directed and it's also women in horror month too so we thought that was fun and it's actually gonna be valentine's week because it's the day after valentine's so well but valentine's day will have expired yes i know valentine's but the week, love continues the love, love, love continues. continues it's love month as well uh- <laughs> yeah, yeah, love month love month and i think the love witch is gonna fit in so beautifully with love month yeah, I, I mean, Monica and I haven't seen it. We both thought it was an old movie, um, but Sydney has instructed us to be, and I quote, flavor blasted um, the first time we watch it. Oh, you have so to. So I'm excited to have that experience, whatever that means. I am excited as well. And can, when I tell you that I felt like I was slapped in the face when I found out this came out in 2016, because like I've been seeing pictures and screenshots from this movie everywhere. And all this, like a bunch of different people have told me to watch it because like, the aesthetic is something that seems to be similar to my own um, or what I strive to be. They're doing it way better than what I'm fucking doing. Um, but I like was shocked. Like the 
just from like the trailer that I've seen, like the quality of the film, the styling, like they fucking nailed it. I mean, maybe they yeah. flop in the middle, but like, like it seems they very... nailed the aesthetic on this one. So I'm very excited. I'm very excited. From what I've seen, it really does look like Blood Spattered Bride, which did come out in the very early yeah, 70s. Yeah, great, um, great comparison. Yeah, totally. And I guess I was kind of wondering, like, how there were all these very high-quality images of it online if it was so old, but that answers the question. So <laughs> I'm excited like, oh, to Oh, it's it. well-preserved. Oh, no, it's from 2016. They did an HD remaster and re-release. <laughs> I don't know. Oh. I don't know what I thought, so amazing well you know thank you for listening and why not sp spread some love for valentine's day um by giving us uh -huh. some love in the form uh -huh. of a five-star review on apple podcast pod chaser or spotify um well smooch all valentine mm -hmm. there's a myriad the of valentine related emojis you could use in your review um so ask us it. to be your valentine in a five-star review apple podcast pod chaser Spotify. If you review th thrice, it will we'll be nice. You... Yep, it would be nice. Oh, oh, that's better than whatever I was gonna try and. Hand I thought you were gonna say end. if you review thrice, I'll give you rice. Life, and I was ice. like, cool. Life, I would accept ice, rice. Was what I would have said for a ice. kiss. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, also you might have noticed we launched our YouTube just last week. Um, so our interview with Christian Brune is up on there. So follow us on YouTube. We're also, or subscribe, excuse me. I'm just learning the lingo. Um, oh, we're going into the YouTube game, so. <laughs> oh, God. Media. Um, we're also at Spooky underscore Tuesday on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. We've got some amazing TikToks up, so you should go look at them. Um, and also, we are at Spooky Tuesday Pod on Tumblr and Facebook. And at Spooky Tuesday on Letterboxd. And, you know, um, happy Valentine's Day from all of us to you. And thanks for listening. From our Valentussy to yours, happy Valentine's Day. Bye, spookies. I'll be waiting in hell for you. Harry, Harry, I'm coming. This whole fucking town is going to die. We're coming back, you bastards. <laughs> Sarah, be my bloody valentine. <laughs> Daddy, gone away. Harry won the Navy. Spooky Tuesday was created by Monica Height, Sydney Thompson, and Chelsea Duff, and edited by Sydney Thompson. Our gorgeously spooky tunes are all thanks to Tamara Simons, who you can follow on Instagram at Captain Tamara. And our podcast art is by Mary Murphy, who you can find on Instagram at the underscore moon underscore OMG.